What's going on everybody, Lardy here, and chances are that you've already heard that Woody is getting a buff. Clay is apparently going to be handing out skill trees to every character, not just Wilson. And the first round of these are going to Wolfgang, Wormwood, and Woody. To be honest, I'm not all that interested in the updates for the first two because neither were in the desperate need of a buff. In my video called Woody Needs a Buff, I explain why Woody needs one, and how I would go about fixing him if Clay gave me creative control over the character. Ever since the Woody skill tree update has been in beta, I've been getting messages from friends and subscribers essentially saying that my prayers have finally been answered. However, it may come as a surprise that I don't fully agree with that assessment. While my overall verdict is that Clay did a really good job with Woody's skill tree, I think there are a few things that are holding this update back from reaching its full potential. Before I get into the negatives, I want to talk about the positives, because there are many. First off, if you are going to use any of the wear forms, you definitely want to go for Curse Embracer, because it will completely remove the downsides of consuming kitschy idols. This means you won't take 20 damage or a 20 point hit to your sanity when you decide to transform. This isn't a huge deal for the Were Beaver or the Goose, because you typically won't be using those forms for combat. However, it makes quite a big difference with the Moose, since you'll be fighting with it. The Moose has 90% natural armor, so losing 20 HP is the equivalent of losing 200 points of damage. To get to the Curse Embracer skill, you need to activate Transformation Timer 1, 2, and 3. Each of these skills decreases the rate at which Woody's wear meter drains to the point that when all three are activated, it almost effectively halves the rate at which he loses wearness over time. These are really good for all of his wear forms, but more so for the Goose and the Moose, because the Beaver can usually clear out a forest or level a quarry very quickly. The Goose is faster than ever now, but despite that, you want to be able to stay in Goose form as long as possible, since you'll primarily be using it in the early game to quickly map out the surface, caves, and the ocean. For the Moose, the slower wear meter drain is really good. It extends your wear form so much that one idol gives you enough time to finish fights against all the seasonal bosses, the Ancient Guardian, Nightmare Warpig, and even some raid bosses like the Shadow Pieces and Claws. The decreased wear meter drain also gives you a lot more control over when you untransform, which is great for situations or bosses that require multiple idols. Unless you are planning on never using his wear forms, the Curse Embracer skill tree is a must have and is a significant and well deserved buff to Woody. The positives don't end there though, because that's just one skill tree. Each of Woody's transformations have four skills that buffs the respective form. However, the best branch by far has got to be the Wermoose. The Were Beaver has skills that let him mine and chop faster. A skill that lets him mine hard substances like Dreadstone that pops up in the cave after beating Charlie, or Pure Brilliance that appears by the rifts. The Were Beaver mastery allows him, at the cost of a bit of wareness, to slam his tail on the ground, which does a lot of work against trees in a huge AoE, basically like Barrager's Brown Pound attack. It also can deal damage to mobs but it only does like 25 damage and the damage AoE is about one tile, so its combat applications are very limited. You can also use this on a boat to send you flying across the map at supersonic speeds. The tail slap and the ability to mine dreadstone slash pure brilliance is really cool, but the problem is that you don't really need to chop down 100 trees all that often, and even if you did, the Werebeaver without any skill points is already really good at it. The ability to mine faster is good for busting up a lot of petrified trees that crop up every year or so, but you could also use Berger for this. The most valuable beaver perk in my opinion is the ability to mine dreadstone and pure brilliance. The ability to mine dreadstone means you can activate the nightmare wear big fight faster than any other character, making Woody potentially the best character for speedrunning this dude. Over their lifespan, Lunar Rifts will spawn a lot of rift slows. In my opinion, being able to mine all these at once for just 3 monster meat is a way cheaper option than using weather panes or pickaxes. So if it were me, I'd get the wear beaver 1, 2, and 3, but not the mastery. Like the Were Beaver, the Were Goose has gotten a lot of buffs too. Were Goose 1 is by far the best skill and is in my opinion the only point that's worth getting. It increases the Goose's speed to the point that it's even faster than a Beeflo with a normal saddle. With that speed, you can easily outrun anything that you might bump into during your travels. Even Hounds, which are basically as fast as the Goose, can easily be avoided by just running across water since they swim way slower. With its increased speed and decreased awareness drain from the Were Timer perks, the Goose can more than double the amount of ground it can cover with a single idol. Unfortunately, the other perks aren't nearly as impactful. Were Goose 2 makes the Goose waterproof, however the Were Forms are already 70% waterproof, are highly resistant to freeze damage, and have no chance of tool slippage since they can't use hand slot items. The only time I can see this being useful is against Acid Rain since 100% waterproofness means you are completely unaffected. However, if you're experiencing Acid Rain, then you're probably at the point where you've mapped out everything, gotten things like the Eyebrella or Umbrella, and have good transportation alternatives like the Walking Cane or a Beefalo. Were-Goose 3 lets you dodge on an incoming attack as a Were-Goose, which is cool, but why would you need this when you A. should be avoiding combat as a Goose, and B. are faster than everything as a Goose. The only situation I'd see this being useful in is a random earthquake, but you can just dodge everything by looking at the shadows. 
The Goose Mastery lets you, at the cost of a large amount of awareness, fly into the sky and appear on a random location on the map. This might be useful early game if you're trying to find things in the ocean such as Crab King, Lunar Island, or Monkey Island since it lets you teleport back to the mainland in an instant, but that's about it. Random teleportation at the cost of a huge amount of awareness is, most of the time, not worth it when you can just explore on foot at 66% movement speed. So for the Goose, I'd only invest in the Were Goose 1 perk. When it comes to the Were Moose, this dude is a completely different animal. In my opinion, you definitely want to go for all four of the Were Moose skills, because every single one of them buffs the Moose in a very significant way. And unlike the forms for mining, chopping, and exploration, the combat form is the one that will be seeing a lot of use, no matter what stage of the game you are in. In my video, Woody needs a buff. I noted that it makes no sense for the Moose to be slower than the default player speed since the Moose's inability to heal itself means that he needs the mobility to kite. Weremoose 1 increases his movement speed to match the default players. This 10% movement speed increase might not seem like much, but anyone who used the Weremoose before this update will notice an enormous difference. The difference is so huge that both me and Mattis of Mats initially thought that the Moose was moving much faster than the regular character. It was only after testing the Moose's walking speed alongside a normal character that we realized that they were identical. Regardless, the movement speed increase has an enormous impact on the Were Moose. It increases his ability to kite so much that fights that were previously deemed unviable as the Moose, such as the Twins of Terror, can now be done without taking any damage. There used to be many situations where the Moose could get stun locked, however his new speed allows him to walk out of these situations with far less damage than before. In addition to the movement speed increase, Were Moose 1 decreases the recoil from charging into objects, so much so that the recoil is almost non-existent. When the Wermoose used to charge into a solid object, it would put him into a groggy state, where he walked extremely slowly. He would remain in this state for what seemed to be forever. Now the grogginess goes away almost instantaneously. This means accidentally running into objects while charging isn't punishing anymore, which is huge. Wermoose 2 is even more incredible than Wermoose 1. In my Woody Needs a Buff video, I noted that while the Moose's infinite 90% armor is impressive, it doesn't come close to making up for the fact that he can't heal while in the form. This is why a Wermoose that is under the effects of Jelly Beans or Heartrending Ballad is strong enough to face tank raid bosses while the normal Moose needs to dodge like his life depends on it. Wermoose 2 changes all that because it gives the Moose passive health regeneration. With the skill activated, the Moose will gain 3 HP every 5 seconds. It's not quite as strong as the 2 HP every 2 seconds from Jelly Beans, but it's pretty darn close. And unlike Jelly Beans, the Moose gets this for the entirety of the transformation. The regeneration is so strong that you can beat Deer Clops by just holding F. You can beat Moose Goose by just holding F. You can squeeze by against Barrager by just holding F. You can even tank Kloss as long as you dodge the Ice Spell. If you actually decide to kite, then don't be surprised when you leave a lot of these fights at almost full HP. The healing is so good that a lot of times, you'll leave fights with more HP than you started with. You can even use the transformation as a way to fill up your HP if you set up a punching bag or punch Chester every once in a while. In short, the healing is game changing. It means you can outright face tank things or make tons of mistakes in a fight and still come out with a victory. I wouldn't say Wermoose 3 is as strong as Wermoose 2, however it's not only extremely useful, but it's also in my opinion the coolest skill that the Wermoose can unlock. Wermoose 3 allows you to stop mid-charge. Prior to this update, the Moose had to charge the full distance before it could stop. Because of this, it was really impractical to use it to kite, since you'd have to waste time charging away and walking back to whatever you were fighting. Desperate Woody Mains tried to come up with ways to work around this, like charging at the ocean, but it only helped in very specific circumstances. The new charge allows you to fully take advantage of the 200% movement speed that you get as the Moose. You can use it to easily dodge the Shadow Rook, easily dodge Kloss's Pounce attack. This is my personal favorite, it lets you reliably kite and rage Dragonfly. The charge was always a cool and unique mobility option for the Moose, that really changed up his fighting style from the way normal characters fight. Wermoose 3 brings out the full potential of this ability and makes it very effective, but also fun to use instead of frustrating. The last Wermoose skill tree is the Mastery. The mastery is also really good because it makes the moose do an AoE Hulk smash attack on every third hit. The AoE is nice and can be useful in certain situations like against Fuel Weaver or the Twins of Terror. However, by far the best thing about the attack is the sheer amount of damage it does. The moose normally hits for 59.5 damage, however the smash deals a crazy 136 damage per attack. So every third punch, he's dealing as much damage as Mighty Wolfgang with a Dark Sword. If you average the damage over his 3 hits, he's dealing 85 damage per attack meaning he's dealing as much damage per hit as Wigfried with a Dark Sword. If you factor in the Moose's slightly slower attack speed, Human Woody would have to be hitting for 76 damage per hit in order to match the Moose. Without the Mastery, the Moose is doing 59.5 damage per hit. With the Mastery, his 59.5 goes to 85, which is a huge buff. 
Whether it's increased movement speed, health regeneration, charge cancelling, or increased attack power, all of the Moose's skills are great and heavily impact his effectiveness. So I would highly recommend going full Bear Moose Mastery since combat is such a huge part of the game and incurs far more risk and reward than things like wood gathering or exploring. Other than the Shadow and Lunar Affinity skills, the rest of them don't really impact his wear form too much. Quick Picker 1, 2, and 3 let him pick things like grass and twigs faster. Woodworker makes him craft boards with one less log. Hat Carving lets you make the hardwood hat, which is an extremely cheap but worse version of the football helmet. Cane Carving is a must-have skill since it lets Woody hand out walking sticks that increase player speed while equipped. The first two tree guard skills aren't that interesting as they just increase Woody's damage against tree guards. However, the third lets you craft a tree guard idol that lets Woody spawn in tree guards or even poison birch nuts whenever he wants. This lets you do some pretty neat things like kill raid bosses with an army of tree guards or harvest enormous amounts of twigs and birch nuts if you have a Wendy or Winona on your team. Finally, we got the Shadow and Lunar Affinity skills. The Shadow one is where it's at since it makes nightmare creatures passive to you when you're in wear form. This isn't much of an issue with the beaver since he'll mostly be used for harvesting tons of trees in a relatively safe environment. It's semi-useful as the goose because you might be using the goose a lot in the early game and the constant sanity drain may put you into insanity territory. You also might use the goose to explore the ruins so this perk really comes in handy as it also makes nightmare beaks passive to you. As per usual, the form that benefits the most from this is the moose. Against bosses, you'll not only be using the moose for extended periods of time, but there's a good chance you'll be exposed to huge insanity auras. The Shadow Wrangler perk means you can focus on the boss fight, and after it's dead, you can get your sanity up by force attacking the nightmares that have been passive to you. Not only is the ability good for the moose, but it's also good for your teammates, because it operates like the Bone Helm and pacifies nightmare creatures that would normally attack your teammates, if they were also insane. The Lunar Renegade is what I'd call boring but necessary. It just makes Woody immune to the force transforming effects of Full Moon. This means that once your moonstorms are activated, you no longer have to lose all your hunger and wait for your wear meter to drain to zero every single night. Nothing special about it, but it's a necessary change to make Woody a lot more enjoyable when going the Celestial Champion route. Those are my thoughts on Woody's skill tree. All the wear forms, especially the wear moose, are a lot more viable and interesting. It's overall a huge leap in the right direction for Woody, making the character a lot more fun as the wear forms are a lot more viable. However, like I said in the beginning, it's not perfect. One of the points that I made in Woody Needs a Buff is that the Were Beaver is slower than even normal characters if they were to hire Pigmen, because Pigmen allow the characters to multitask. Obtaining wood is a two-part process. Part 1 involves cutting down the trees and digging up the stumps. Part 2 involves actually picking up all the wood. The Were Beaver mastery makes the cutting down and digging up part go by extremely quickly. However, just like before the skill trees, Woody's major weakness is the collection process. Because he can only perform one action at a time, he still gets severely beaten by Maxwell, and he's not much better against any other character using Pigmen. The Were Beaver costs 3 monster meat to use. For 3 monster meat, any other character can just feed 3 pigs and chop down trees almost as quickly. This is all assuming you have the Were Beaver mastery. In my Woody Needs a Buff video, I propose letting the Were Beaver equip the Lazy Forager in order to solve this problem. This still holds true. Allowing the Were Beaver to equip chest slot items would let it smoke the regular character and even beat out Maxwell. But there are several other ways that Clay could go about doing this. Were Beaver 2 allows the Beaver to chop faster, which is kind of unnecessary because it already does this really quickly. To make this skill more consequential, they could add to the Were Beaver 2 the ability to fill any open inventory slots with wood from trees that the beaver has chopped down. Another suggestion for Were Beaver 2 that could solve this problem is that any tree that the beaver fells will have all of its logs stacked instead of scattered individually. For example, if the beaver chops down a fully grown tree, instead of the tree producing 3 logs, it would produce a stack of 3 logs. The same would apply to the tail slab. I think any of these changes would put the beaver in its correct place as the number one wood harvester, which is where it should be especially if you're going to invest all your skill points into Were Beaver Mastery. Next is the Goose. I think the Goose is held back by the fact that it doesn't have much mid and late game potential. Once you've mapped out the surface world and the caves and the ocean, is there really much of a point to using 3 monster meat in order to get from point A to point B? The Rider Beefalo and an Ornery Beefalo with a Glossomer Saddle already gives every character a faster option than the Goose without the need to drop your head and hand slot items. Once you know where the ocean landmarks are, boating is sufficient. At that point, I don't think using up 3 monster meat is worth it. For the goose, in order to give it late game viability, I will change it so that when the goose flies into the air, it will always land on the same type of turf that it was previously on. For example, if the goose was standing on rocky turf when it used its fly ability, it would end up on rocky turf somewhere else in the world when it lands. With this, the player is incentivized to use specialized turf to give themselves a reliable way to teleport to desired locations. There are some restrictions on this ability such as the minimum distance that the destination turf has to be from the starting turf and that taking off while in the ocean will randomize the destination, 
but I think using up 3 monster meat, all your hunger and a bunch of time can be worth it to teleport from point A to point B in the late game. Finally, we get to the moose. As explained before, the moose is the form that needs the buff the most, because traveling at super speed with night vision, as well as wood harvesting aren't generally dangerous tasks, while the greatest challenges that the game throws at you are the raid bosses. The changes to the moose have made him really good, and obviously if I had to choose between the weremoose pre and post update, I'd choose post weremoose in a heartbeat. However, while I think the weremoose update is good, there are two issues that I think hold it back from being exceptional. The first one is that his healing is just too strong. Look, I like the passive healing. I don't think they should remove it entirely, but as it is right now, it's just too good. In the majority of situations, Jelly Beans made old Weremoose almost unkillable for the first 2 minutes of the transformation. Weremoose 2 heals the moose more than half the rate of Jelly Beans, at no cost and the effect lasts the entire 7 plus minutes that you'll be in the transformation. To put that into perspective, Jelly Beans will at most heal the moose for about 120 HP. Over the course of the transformation, the passive healing that the moose gets heals him for over 250. So you're getting more than 2 jelly beans worth of healing for free, just for transforming. The healing is so good that, like mentioned before, as long as you charge through the ice spell, the class fight becomes so laughably easy that you can just hold F the entire time and win. The healing is so good that in so many situations, you can turn off your brain, make a ton of mistakes, and still manage to win fights or get out of situations with the majority of your health left. Prior to Woody's skill tree, a lot of the damage you're taking is unavoidable because of how limited your mobility was. But the update has given the Weremoose the ability to actually avoid damage and get out of situations given you know how to use the form. The increased movement speed lets you reliably dodge the twins and makes everything way easier. The Moose can now reliably dodge things like Klaus's lunge attack or the level 3 Shadow Rook. This update has given the Weremoose really cool tools that, given he learns how to use them, lets him greatly increase his survivability in battle by avoiding damage. The problem is that the healing is so good that you don't need to learn how to use them. Instead of learning how to kite with the moose, or learning how to time your charges, or positioning yourself so you don't get stun lock, the rapid healing coupled with the 90% armor lets you make mistake after mistake after mistake without consequence, even against things like raid bosses. When a singular ability allows you to solo many of the toughest situations in the game by simply holding F, or failing to dodge significantly more times than you succeed, then I'd call that a crutch. The healing should be a reward, a bonus longevity that the Weremoose earns by using his unique tools to avoid damage, not something that the Weremoose leans on because he's too unskilled to learn how to dodge. Therefore I would reduce the healing from 3 HP every 5 seconds to 3 HP every 10 seconds. 3 HP every 10 seconds is still a lot of healing. Over the course of the transformation, that's about 130 HP for one idol, which almost doubles the Weremoose's effective HP. I think at this rate, it would make raid bosses dangerous enough that you'd have to actually focus on dodging them because if you mess up enough, you could die, or at the very least, you'd have to run away from the fight, untransform, heal yourself, and consume another idol. Or if you're fighting a bunch of mobs that can stunlock you, you have to think ahead about positioning, or be worried about charging into an obstacles, because the heal factor alone isn't going to be enough to make up for your mistakes, if you commit enough of them. If the game gives you the tools to avoid damage, it should reward you for using these tools well, and punish you for not. Lowering the heal rate wouldn't lower the moose's overall effectiveness. All it would do is increase the amount of skill and planning required to fully utilize him. The second problem with the Weremoose is that he suffers from the same power stagnation as Wolfgang. If you've seen my The Problem with Wolfgang video, you'll know that one of the issues that I take with the character is that right from the get-go, he's afforded double damage since he spawns in with dumbbells and it's so easy for him to get his mightiness above 75. Other than that, Wolfgang is at or close to his max potential from almost day one. Contrast that to characters like Wanda, who needs to go to the archives or the ruins, get tier 2 magic, kill Mac Tusk, and beat the Nightmare Werepig in order to get close to her maximum potential in a way that's very different from other characters. The same is true for Wendy. Her unique path to her maximum involves activating the Year of the Bunnymen update, taming an ornery beefalo, getting a morning glory, and going to the ruins for deconstruction staffs for the War Saddle. Weber is even more interesting than them, since the way he gets to his max potential is not only really unique, really good, but it's also not permanent, and depending on how well you play him, you can end up losing everything. If you were to view these characters in terms of power level, the interesting ones start off low and build their power over time in a unique way. The boring ones either start off at maximum or close to it and flatline. The Weremoose kind of suffers from this. You get all your skill points before you even spawn in. So the Weremoose on day 1 is basically just as good as the Weremoose on day 1000. Sure there are ways to upgrade the moose like giving him jelly beans or swapping in as Warly to cook garlic, spicy and electric dishes. But if you're at the point where you're swapping to Warly and mass farming goat horns, garlic and chili powder, you probably could have also swapped to Wolfgang or made a bunch of catapults around all the boss arenas. Jelly beans are a way to upgrade the moose, but that's just one thing and it only lasts for the first 2 minutes. 
For the other 5 minutes, your moose will be identical to what he was on day 1. In other words, like Wolfgang, he sort of flatlines. He's good on day 1, but you can't really build him up as you explore the map and build up the rest of your arsenal. It's only in the very late game that you can upgrade the moose further via Warley's dishes. To solve this issue, I would propose the same idea that I did in my Woody Needs a Buff video. Allow the moose to equip head and chest slot items, except armor and armor durability is completely ignored. Therefore, you can upgrade your wereforms via runes gear like the Lazy Forager, which would make the beaver the best at gathering wood. You could make the goose travel at 200% movement speed if it has Were Goose 1 and the Magi equipped. You could give the moose the Magi to make it even better at dodging. Or you could give it something like the Life Gaming Amulet, which would provide it with an additional 70 HP over the course of the transformation. It would open up interesting options like equipping the Bee Queen Crown for the reverse sanity effects, or using the Scale Mill to make the moose completely immune to fire. Since armor and armor durability is ignored while in the Wermoose state, the moose wouldn't gain any damage resistance from the crown or the scale mill, but he would be able to benefit from the secondary effects while not using up the durability. You could also do cool stuff like wear the enlightened crown and stand next to a bunch of dwarf stars, since the Wermoose healing and overheat resistance would allow him to tank the overheating damage while keeping his sanity maxed out. Finally, equipping these items would keep Woody protective after transforming and not decrease his effective storage capacity that much since he wouldn't have to unequip and store his head slot items whenever he eats an idol. So I would either remove Wear Timer 3 and replace it with a skill that would allow Woody's wereforms to use head and body slot items, or I would add this ability to the Curse Embracer skill. If Woody could do this, it wouldn't make the wereforms flatline. Instead, they would also get stronger in unique ways as Woody did things like obtained magic, explore the ruins, and beat raid bosses. Anyways, that's what I think about the Woody skill tree. I'm very happy with what we've got. I'd probably rate it an 8 out of 10. However, it has a few things that I think are holding it back from reaching its fullest potential. Like always, let me know what you think in the comments section. I wrote the script for this video in the middle of July before they fully released the update, so it's possible some things may have changed. However, they haven't made all that many changes yet, so I doubt changes will be that significant. Thanks for watching everyone, take care and have a great day.